Well, as you can see, I love watching Cooking with Tittle, and I'm so glad you love watching, too, because we've got a new email address. That's right. It's tittle in the middle at live, L-I-V-E dot com. So I do hope you will email your tittle. I've got some great green things going on for this year and some healthy treats. Bon appetit. Let's eat each and every Thursday at 7 p.m. and Fridays at 2 p.m. right here on Channel 19. And now, back to the show. Hey. hey. in the middle. Want to have some fun? Some fun? Some fun? Some fun? Well, well, welcome to the LaDonna Tittle TV radio show. <laughs> the show. Man, Miss Margaret's Creole Gumbo, and this is Miss Margaret's baby boy, Johan. <laughs> we have got a special treat today. Tell us what you're going to do. For We've us. been drinking hurricanes. <laughs> <laughs> he done gave it away already. <laughs> we make gumbo. And we're going to show you how we made the Creole Gumbo and also the special hurricanes. Straight from New Orleans, folks. Right in our own She's backyard. She's talking, I'm eating. <laughs> At the Jackson Park Harbor. Great yacht club. Thank I like you. where you hang the out. Jackson Park, this is a great place to hang out. This is the best seat in Chicago. But don't tell anybody, because we don't want everybody to know that we're here. This is the best kept secret. And now, the original for y'all only gumbo in the world. Let's show them how we made this. Oh, OK. You're cooking with Tim. Long of the tea. Let's eat. Let's eat. So what do you call this, Yon? Gumbo. This Gum is real gumbo. <laughs> There's only one kind of gumbo, and that's Creole gumbo. There's no such thing as Cajun gumbo. Gumbo was not a Cajun dish, it was a Creole dish. Is that right? That's right, that's right. That's the, the Creole people that settled in New Orleans were from France and Spain, and some brought their own French chefs with them. Is that right? And they right? made a bouillabaisse. And this is the, the offshoot of bouillabaisse, actually. Well, so far, looking in that pot, I tell you, I could just jump in that pot and become a crab myself. <laughs> Okay, don't think about it too seriously, y'all, okay? Well, you know, I had to get festive for this festive occasion. But uh, you're going to show us how exactly gumbo gets started. Right. The Creole gumbo, your right. mama's cat. There's only one kind of gumbo. And Johan, let me Creole. just tell you now, my viewers are loving this right now. So okay. get your pads and pencils, and you got to keep up. Okay. All right, let's start. Well, the gumbo is about a roux. And once you start making your roux, you have to have everything ready. You're not going to be able to stop to get anything ready, okay? okay. So you have to have all your little ducks in order. All and right. so what we're going to do is, for gumbo, you have to have okra. So we're going to start sauteing okra. You have okra. to cook it. If you don't cook the okra, it has a slimy texture to it that a lot of people don't like. Yeah. And if you don't have okra, you're not making gumbo. Actually, oh. in Central and South Africa, 
the word uh, gumbo means okra. Is that right? right. And that was the, the African influence in tuna fish with the French. And the Native Americans contributed the pilo, which is the ground sassafras. Well, I knew that I always loved me some okra, I tell you folks. Nothing like a fried, and You have to really, oil. really cook it good because a lot of people don't like the sliminess. I couldn't get fresh, I got frozen, so it tears we'll up a little bit, right? <laughs> so we'll put this in here and get this started. I'm your assistant, so you can okay. just start. I can Ooh. give you the garbage then. <laughs> yes, give me the garbage, give me the garbage. And we got our little garbage box right over here. And you wanna cook this um, fast and hot. If you can see in the pot here, see the strings here? Yes, I You want to cook it till you stop seeing those strings. Okay? Is that right? And that means that it won't be slimy at all. It'll just be like green beans or another green vegetable. A lot of people say they, they don't like okra because it's slimy, but it does not have to be that way. How could you not like okra? Well, I just don't know. I know what it is, though. It's the yeah. slime that gets you. Some people say they, they don't want okra in their gumbo, but then they're not having gumbo. They're sure not having the gumbo. The word gumbo means okra. Okra. Okay. You got that, folks. The word gumbo means okra. Okay, so while this is going, that was, uh, I just put in a tablespoon of canola oil. Okay. Mom used to put lard in. We're not going to do that. Oh, okay. right. We've, we've gotten <laughs> fresh these days. And now we're going to, um, we have andouille sausage okay. from Appaloosa, Louisiana. Okay. And we're going to start, we're going to brown our sausage and chicken. Okay. Oh. I have drumette. Mom always used drumettes. Okay. Drumettes. Right. Now, you don't have to use andouille sausage. If you don't whatever want kind to. of sausage whatever you like. kind of sausage that you really like, but we're, we're going to try to stick to her original recipe, okay. and then your viewers can tweak it any kind of way that they want. So is to. it a spicy or it's a, a hot spicy sausage? smoked sausage? Okay, okay. Spicy and we're going to dump like that in spicy here. Smoke. There we go. Ooh. Going. Okay. This here. And usually you don't have to have a big skillet like this. Okay. You can do it in a um, small cast iron skillet. And then when that the, is some skillet, I want to take that home right now. It's too big. Well, oh, I like cooking cool. outdoor. I use this for outdoor cooking. Like with the Sea Scouts here, we go camping. And I can okay. put your potatoes, your sausage, your pancakes in one dish, one pot to clean, and that's it. Now tell us a little bit about the Sea Scouts. That's right, people don't know about the Sea Scouts well, here at Jackson Park. Well, first of all, Park. welcome to the Jackson Park Yacht Club. Yay! Okay. We're and here. This is the best kept secret in the harbor, so don't tell anybody where we are. Okay, okay sure, we won't tell us all. <laughs> this is, I'm gonna put these uh, chicken in too, so they can start browning, okay? Oh, right. You, did you need the canola? No. Oh, the, okay. oil, the fat from the sausage will cook both of those. Okay? okay, okay. And this is all before we start our roux, because we have to have everything ready first. Should okay? I keep it stirring here? Uh, you, every now and then. Every now and then. Every now and then. And you said you got to cook it until the string disappears. The string in this stop. And then it's just like a green vegetable. It's a, uh, okra is a very important vegetable in Africa, it's, actually. You know what? We are living green and cooking green this year. So good, anything good. green is healthy. And okra, folks, is really good. So you, it's an acquired taste. That's what I always say. Uh -uh. So you're doing good with the sausage and the chicken drumstick. Right, we're just gonna brown these a little bit. It helps them keep their flavor. Okay. And I already seasoned the drumsticks with just a little pepper and just a little salt. Okay. We're not gonna put too much salt in this dish at all. So the Jackson Park Yacht Club is one of the oldest, most prestigious clubs on the lake. This club is uh, 114 years old. Is that right? Right. And. Um, our charity are the Sea Scouts, which are Boy Scouts that um, we teach to sail. We, use, okay. we actually, we use sailing as a, a tool to teach them leadership skills for the future. So. Well, I saw them cleaning up the 50, uh, not 57th Street, but the Arthur Ashe Beach. Oh, you saw You guys that. are on YouTube. How about nice. that? Well, I was over at the 57th Street Beach, mm -hmm. and trash. But you know what I liked about your uh, YouTube interview was the importance of inventorying our garbage. Absolutely. To see what they're throwing on our seashores that are, right. I should say, not our seashores, but our lake shores. Right. right. To see, uh, you explain it. You well, tell it's, me. if you inventory it, you can make changes instead of just throwing the garbage away. Okay. Um, the Yacht Club here cleaned up Rainbow Beach for several years with the Lake Michigan Federation. Yeah. And we discovered that there were so many plastic straws. 
So that brought about an ordinance where the vendors in the city that sell on the lakefront have to yeah. use paper straws because they're biodegradable. Oh, so makes you, sense. It makes sense, so you, you know what to do, you know. That's wonderful. Changing the environment. Changing that is so good. Really. Before, before you start making gumbo, you have to make sure that everything is in order, especially when you start your roof. Oh, yeah. So you have to clean your crabs. And I want to show your viewers how to do this, okay? okay. This is female. You can always tell the females because the end of the um, their claws are painted orange. Or the males right? are blue all the way. Wow. And this is the female organ here, where the males would just be pointed and long. Oh. So to clean okay. it, you just pop this back. Wow. These these just died a few minutes ago. So. They did. Yeah. They're still kind of moving. I think a I saw them there. <laughs> Don't say that. Your viewers will get upset with oh, them. Oh, okay. So you have to cook them live. So we, well, you keep it. It's like lobster. You want to keep it as live as long as possible. That's right. Okay. okay. And this is, goes in the garbage. I'm going to use that for garbage. And you take a little knife and you cut a little bit this way, a little that way, and you just pull the crown here right off the top like this. Okay? Wow. But I want you to bring that big stock pot over here if you can. Oh, wow. The one in the back there is hot soup. Oh, this is a I'm big sorry. I oh, this one. Oh, this is a big one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> all, all your scraps from, from your preparations go into your stock pot. Is that so right? you make your own stocks and you don't have to buy it. So you don't throw nothing away. Don't throw it away. Hand me that ladle. I'll show you what's in here. Okay. You put your shells from the crabs. You okay. put your... Um, the heads of the shrimp, I'm going to show you how to clean that in a minute. Okay. And any vegetable uh, pairings you have left over, you put in here. So you don't have to buy stock and it's not going to be full of sodium and full of chemicals and it's too easy to make. Now you can, I'm going to break out the antennae okay. in the mouth. Okay. You can eat everything in this crab. Everything. But it's not aesthetically appealing to a lot of people, so I'm going to clean it out. Okay. It's fat. These are all females and roll. And there's nothing in, in New England. They eat everything. So you can eat the fat, all of that yellow. All that yellow stuff in there, you can eat. Now this has to come off. These are the gills. Okay. And they come right off and put those in the garbage. Okay. You see that? Yeah. This side here. These are the gills. They come right off. You can't eat those. I think that crab is still alive. Uh. <laughs> You so, go, you're going to freak out your viewers now. Uh, but but um, when they are still alive, we just storm in some hot water. And that, that kills them real quick. I didn't even get a chance to give it a name. <laughs> give it a good rub down, okay? And this is ready to go into our gumbo pot. Just like right, that. Just like that. Shrimp. That's another story. It's cheaper to buy the shrimp with the head on. A lot of people haven't even seen shrimp with the head on. I tell you. And it costs more for you to get the regular shrimp to have somebody do this. That's what I do. That's it. This is like the shrimp it's you buy in the gooey, store. Isn't it? Yeah, that one didn't come out too cute, but we'll do That's it. That's okay. I won't eat it. Uh -huh. This is the shrimp you get in the store. Just oh, like okay. this. And the head goes in the stock pot. Let me oh, do another. The head goes in the right. stock pot. All oh, you do, God. if you put pressure on the bottom, it comes out much neater. Like oh, okay. Shrimp, head in the stock pot. And that's it. So you're making your own stock, you're buying shrimp less expensive exactly. than normal. Like I said, I go to the Asian store. Oh, well, then it's you so do much good. cheaper. Most people go to the big box membership club stores and buy the bags of frozen okay. stuff. And that's okay. You know, if, 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 you know, there's a lot of work to making gumbo, and if that makes it easier for you, by all means do it, but don't not make the dish. Oh, I tell you. So well, this it. has just been such an experience. And there he's still moving. <laughs> they're going to gonna snap me and bite me in a minute. <laughs> I name you. Don't name him, Tittle. Come on, Junior. I'm gonna, I'm gonna name it Dinner. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> How did well, you get into that, cooking? Your mother did. My you? mother always cooked. My job was to actually brown the okra when I was a little kid. <laughs> okay. And see, we had people come from. Um, New York, Los Angeles, family members. We even had family that came from uh, New Orleans. We get on the bus to come to Chicago because Margaret Ann was making gumbo. I love it. Oh, Margaret Ann, you go, Margaret Ann. We're up I there with you. I had Aunt Vinny, and uh, we had a table.
table and chair set up in the living room just for her when she came in off the bus from New Orleans. Is that right? And I'm like seven years old, eight years old when I remember this. And she would sit in that chair and the first thing she'd do was take her wig off. <laughs> and she had a little stocking cap. Well, that was okay. I could handle that. <laughs> then she took her teeth out and set it on the table. So now the table's got the wig and the teeth. And after the teeth, that freaked me out a little bit, so I didn't go in the room anymore. They told me by the end of the day, that table would be full of things from Aunt Vic. I can't right? even tell you everything that would end up on that table. She told me she didn't need the teeth till the gumbo was ready anyway. So That's right. You don't need no teeth to eat this <laughs> dish. That's for sure. <laughs> that bless her heart, Aunt Betty. Yeah. My goodness. Mm. But this is uh, Mom's gumbo, and she was a, like I said, a Creole woman born and raised in New Orleans. She was the oldest of seven. Okay. And she cooked for them and friends and extended family. And that's what you did was brown and I did the I did the okra. My sisters used to chop the onions because I remember they were crying all the time with tears in their <laughs> eyes and stuff. So we always and mom cooked all kinds of dishes. She cooked all kinds of things. There is no I never knew that you should cook okra till it's no stringy and slimy. Okay, these are the crabs. Remember I showed you how to clean those earlier? Oh yes, oh yes. And they're ready. The shrimp, remember they had the heads on them? And those are ready to go. This is the green onion and parsley. That okay. goes in toward the end when we add the seafood. Okay. These are onions. This is a one large onion or uh, two medium onions would be fine. Okay. About four stalks of celery. This is a bunch of green onions in the bottom of that with the parsley on top. I love it. Okay. It looks so healthy. Yeah. Oh, yum, 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 yum. Green <laughs> is good, y'all. Green is real good. Okay, and We're going to so use about a can and a half of crushed tomatoes. Okay. And we're also going to put a couple of cans of crab meat in. Okay. okay. And, and you've got one of my favorite seasonings Old over here. Old seasoning. We're going to put a Can't little bit of that it. in there. Not too much of that. And you got and your salt. And bay leaves, right. And what is this? Cayenne, pepper, and thyme. Thyme goes good in gumbo. And that's filet. That's the ground sassafras plant. Ooh. That's the Native that American good. contribution to this dish. Mm. Oh, the parsley and onions are so good. <laughs> and for our roux, we're going to use the flour and oil. A roux is fat and flour, basically the set. That's Mine what a roux lard, is. You know, but a roux is flat. We have to cook that flour. Okay. You do? Yes, we do. And it's, 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 that's the longest. That's why people don't make gumbo. They say it takes so long. It's because they have to uh, make a roux. It's but a labor you, of love. It's a labor of love. But all this has to be ready. If everything's ready before you start, this is the easiest thing in the world to make. Well, I see. It's, it's great. Well, I love the ingredients. I love everything. And, uh, of course, uh, the rice. Uh, people love rice with gumbo, and your rice is looking good. Okay. But before we get to this exciting roux, which okay. I heard that you have to cook it for 35 minutes. Yes. Constantly yes. stirring. Well, that's why people think it takes a long time. But it, it, that's the longest time you got to stir something, so what? It's worth well, it in the end. Well, Johan, since the uh, roux is going to take that long, do you think it's time for the hurricanes? We'll have a hurricane. <laughs> if we make hurricanes, I got to put my shades on so I can be cool. Oh, is yeah. that all right? <laughs> uh, uh. Okay. This is Every, what I love. Everybody in New Orleans, Mardi Gras time has to have a hurricane. Okay. Which is the ingredients. This okay. is the rum, this whichever the your rum. choice is. You put an ounce and a half of white rum in. Okay. okay. One thousand one. One thousand. Okay. Let me do mine. I'll have one with you. One thousand know, one. Okay. And then, what's, what happened to one thousand and two? That's okay. it. Okay. And then we'll put an uh, ounce and a half of dark rum. Ooh. Okay. You mix the two together. Even the bees are running. One thousand one. One thousand one. Oh, one thousand one. <laughs> so it's a mixture of light rum and dark rum. Wow. Then equal parts, orange juice. And that's why I call it a hurricane. And pineapple juice. Pineapple juice, okay, got you here. Let's, let's see the pretty glasses here, okay. Then you put a... Yeah, let me tell you, these are hurricane glasses, LaDonna. I got these special I for see. you. In New Orleans, we get a plastic cup. You can <laughs> drink in the street, but you can't have glass or metal in the street. Oh, really? That's why at Mardi Gras you have a plastic cup. Well, I but don't this is you. shaped like the hurricane candle holders, where oh. the candle would go here so the wind wouldn't blow it out, and then if it tipped over, it would put itself out and trap the wax and fire in. That's why it has the narrow neck. 
So these are actual hurricane glasses. Wow. And you put a little splash of cranberry juice in here, we're making a hurricane now. A uh, hurricane, we'll put all this down. Now it's so getting pretty. Oh, it looks yummy. And a little grenadine on top for sweetness. See here? Isn't that pretty? Now, Ooh, this is a category two hurricane. Okay. If you're making a category five hurricane, you put another shot of 151 on top. But I'm not going to do that to you, me, oh, or my guest. Uh-uh, I'm not going to do it to you. Let's go there. Uh-uh, you give it a little twist. A little twist, okay. and we garnish with the little lime. And that's it. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I'm not good at garnishing. Uh -uh. <laughs> I'm split it and then put it on. And a maraschino cherry. Ooh. And, excuse me, I have an umbrella for you. Oh, my goodness. Pink for little girls. Blue for big boys. Okay. And, and this, yeah, this is a hurricane for you, my love. Ooh, thank you so much. And Lord knows what's going to happen to the rest of this gumbo if I have a sip of this. Well. Let's see. Bonus for tea, let's see. Let's how do you say we're gonna drink? <laughs> let's toast. That's to you. Look at good times roll. Oh Lord have mercy. That is good. Oh. Ah. That is really good. It you is know, good. I'm not a sweet drinker. Mm. You know what we like to say while you're stirring the roux? <laughs> you're cooking with two. Bon appetit. Let's, let's see. see and get that hurricane. Hey, I'm surrendering to the hurricane. What the <laughs> hell, I can't hold out any longer. I gotta keep one hand stirring. <laughs> that is a good exercise. Oh Lord, that's good. Well, can I just stir one time? Go ahead. Okay, just to feel it. Okay. Oh no, listen, don't splash this on you because it's hot oil and it'll stick to you. What, okay? like yeah. grits? It like grits, exactly. Y'all heard the grit story. <laughs> okay. okay, there you go. I mean, and he's very careful when he stirs and gives me the ladle here, the we spatula. Can't stop. That's right. You know, I am known in some circles for my spatula in my hand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you cook too? Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I am known to have a spatula or two in my hand. This is so neat. This has got to be one of the most beautiful places in Chicago. I love sitting here looking at the boat. Oh, and I tell you, doing this, I finally learned how to at least make some gravy. Uh, uh, you can <laughs> you cook a roux. The French people cook a lot of roux for a lot of dishes. They're going to actually fry and cook in here. See that? Oh, boy. Whoa. Whoa. And our color's going to get really dark and rich. See Ooh, that? I like that. That's just, a lot of people don't know that. You put the onions in first. We are, car the, car the sugars and the onions are coming out and caramelizing. This is perfect. This is your Creole roux right here. This is the big secret to making a but, good but, pot of gumbo. But you didn't put any sugar in it. No, it's the sugars, come, natural sugars that are in the onions okay. are coming out of the onions now and okay. darkening this roux. Oh, wonderful. And this one? Uh, now that the onions are totally cooked, and their their um, sugars have darkened our roux. I'm going to add the celery next, and that's going to cool us down a little bit. Don't have to be so worried about it burning or anything now. And this came out just perfect. Okay, now it's time to add the okra, and it'll actually continue cooking in this pot as well. So I'm going to put this in now. We have to have everything ready before yeah. we start the roux. I see. And this is the stock that we made earlier from our shrimp, um, shrimp pills and everything that's in the gumbos in here, the crabs and everything. I so know. we have to strain this before it can go in our gumbo. And you're going to hold that for me and I'm going to pour this. Well, you didn't see it, but I, I had to take a shrimp out of the pot. That's here. okay. You wanted to have those whole it shrimp? Was I so good. It was for me to eat last night. It was so good. And it was straight out of the root pot, too. <laughs> okay. So I got the, uh, now this the container strainer. here is the strainer. Right. Okay, so here we go. We're going to be very careful, okay? Don't worry, turn I got them. Turn them more to the side like that. Yes, okay? sir. All right, and if it burns you or something, you holler, okay? Oh, don't worry. Because I have to go through. Yes. See? You okay? Whoa. 
yes, I'm oh, fine. I'm going to keep going. Man. Look at that beautiful pot and all the okay. ingredients. And there goes our shrimp stock. I buy stock that's all salt and monosodium glutamate. And stuff. here is the juice you from the salt. You can make it all right. We'll wait till it cools before I just taste a little teaspoon of it. You know, I just taste everything along the way. Yes. <laughs> you know what? That's what I do. <laughs> that's why you're cooking with Tittle. How else do we know it's good? That, that's true. That's they take true. my word for this, and believe me, this is good. So, there we go. And we're making gumbo now. Gumbo now. It's gumbo almost. Now I can relax a little bit. It doesn't have to, it's not going to burn on me. That is so good. I can see why you constantly stir for one half hour. You don't want to burn it. If you burn it, you have to throw it out and start all over again with making your roux because it'll impart a, a burnt flavoring into the gumbo. That's the same way about chitlins, y'all. If you burn it, forget it. <laughs> Might as well be scans. <laughs> okay. Ooh, gumbo. Looks good. Here. Ooh, that looks good. Hurricane Mama. <laughs> and we are doing it. You can pass me a can of tomatoes. Don't can cut yourself. Can of tomatoes. Okay. Can of tomatoes. I'm gonna put one and a half can. I'm not gonna put whole, two whole cans. A uh, pint. A heaping tablespoon of thyme. That much. Heaping tablespoon and of thyme. Thyme and gumbo is a wonderful flavor. Cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper for the spicy hot I good luck. my measuring spoons there. Oops. Teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And I like spicy. You like spicy? I like spicy. Okay, that's not a lot actually. Okay. And the black pepper. Black pepper. About the same amount. A teaspoon. Okay. And no. Yes. Oh, not babe, too it's much. good. I remember mom using this. I don't care what my sister said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't worry, they won't dispute you today. Okay, now what we're going Oh, I need four bay leaves, right? So now our crabs and shrimp are Ooh, in. Look at and that. And if you pour in the, these are green peppers that we chopped earlier and curly I want you parsley. to know, these She's are good. She's been eating these all day. <laughs> the parsley too? Oh, the parsley is very good. Put oh, some yeah. in the gumbo. Right, <laughs> the gumbo. Should I sprinkle? Or? The sprinkle, dump, pour, whatever. There you go, good job, good job. I want to do this right. There we go. All right. And then now this I'll just cooks eat the scraps. <laughs> 15, 20 minutes, and this will be done. Ready to go. Ready to go. This is a big old pot of gumbo here, too. And this is the pot that uh, the Sea Scouts and all of the club members here at the Jackson Park Harbor are going to be having fun with this evening. Ooh. We're having a... The club members take turns hosting our little Saturday afternoon social. Is that this right? is my turn to host it. And I'm so glad that uh, you've given me the opportunity to do this on your show. Are you kidding? I am so glad to have you. This is going to be the best dish ever. People are going to write in from all over the world. So how did you like the gumbo? It is delicious. You're talking about I would walk two miles for this. <laughs> and I'm not a walker. <laughs> but look like this. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> That's what the hurricanes will do for you. That's what the hurricanes will do for you. <laughs> oh, these are good. Oh, these are so good. Hey, see you at the captain's table. Right? That's right. Right. <laughs> hey.